the integral from 0 to n of x to the k dx. I am sure you know this if you know basic integral calculus. You may also know that the answer to this integral is the highest degree term in the formula for this sum right here. Furthermore, you may know the geometric reason behind why this occurs. However, the relationship between these two quantities is deeper than just this. You may already know how to evaluate this sum, but what I am going to show you in this video is an intuitive way to think of the trick which is used to evaluate this sum. And if you don't already know how to evaluate this sum, well you are in the perfect place. And how we will unearth this deeper level of connection is by looking at the fundamental theorem of calculus. Well, it's derivation anyway. We can write this integral as the limit of a sum using the Riemann integral formula. If you haven't seen this formula before, don't be intimidated. It's just the formal way of writing the intuitive idea of slicing the area under a curve into thin rectangular pieces and then adding all those pieces together to get the total area. The limit as m goes to infinity is just to say that the number of slices goes to infinity. The summation symbol is just the integral symbol in disguise. r over m to the k is our function which we are integrating x to the k and 1 over m is the width of each slice dx. Evaluating this sum is where the anti-differentiation part of integration comes in. x to the k is just the derivative of x to the k plus 1 over k plus 1 and we can write that using the first principle as follows. In the Riemann sum, x was r over m and dx was 1 over m. In the first principle, h is dx, so we can replace x by r over m and h by 1 over m. Plugging all this into our formula for the integral, we get a lovely telescoping sum which evaluates to just what we expected, n to the k plus 1 over k plus 1. Now the natural next question to ask is whether this telescoping trick which is meant for a continuous sum work for a discrete sum as well. To start off, let's look at an approximate version. If we use the binomial theorem to expand r plus 1 to the k plus 1 and then neglect all the terms which have a power of r less than k, then we get an expression for r to the k which is very similar to the one which we got previously for r over m to the k. Plugging this in gives us a telescoping sum which is very similar to the one which we got previously and this gives us an approximate formula for the sum which we were looking at. You may notice that this approximate formula can also be written as an integral and this also has a nice geometric interpretation. But of course we are mathematicians, not engineers, so an approximate formula just won't do. Let's look at the error terms to find out the actual answer. Previously, we expanded r plus 1 to the k plus 1 using the binomial theorem and neglected all the terms which have a power of r less than k. So this time we won't neglect them and let's write them out. To make the upcoming expression a bit cleaner, we'll use this notation. Plugging this in gives us a recursive formula for sk of n in terms of sk minus 1 of n, sk minus 2 of n and so on until s0 of n. Thank you for watching.